So the next piece here is syllogism, and this uses the implications in a way um, that is, we can be reminded of the transitive property, you know, when A equals B and B equals C, this implies that A is equal to C. That's what syllogism is in, in arguments, and that's where it's derived from. So essentially you have three statements, and if it shows that if it's if P then Q, if Q then R, then it makes sense that if P then R. But we have to remember the equivalent statements of an implication. So let's say that if we have a conclusion that says if P then R, then we have to remember back when we discussed equivalent statements And we have to go back and remember, well, what was the equivalent statement to the implication? Well, it was the contrapositive. It says if P then R, then the equivalent statement would be the contrapositive, which was if not R, then not P. So if I get one of these down here as my conclusion. If I get the directive P then R, then obviously I would know it was valid. But if I also get the contrapositive, that's also going to make it valid. So just always remember that you have to remember that it, these two are going to be equivalent and remember those equivalent statements. Okay, so if we looked at something like here, um, if we want to determine whether this argument is valid or invalid, we could do the syllogism. So especially if you have, once again, the red flag is always when you have three implications. If you have three implications, definitely come and try to use the syllogism because that would be the fastest. You could use Euler circles or true tables, but I wouldn't. I want to work smarter, not harder. So just if you see that it's if then, if then, if then, go directly and see if it's a syllogism. If it's not, then it's not valid. It has to be either the contrapositive or the implication in order for the conclusion to be valid. So if I go to the party, I'll be really tired. If I'm really tired, I saw my friends. If I did not see my friends, I did not go to the party. So essentially, they're saying that if I w if they go to the party, they're going to be tired. And then if you notice I'm tired tomorrow, it's because I saw my friends and partied it up all night. And then if you didn't, if I didn't see my friends, then I'm not going to be tired. Okay. So let's go ahead and try the syllogism. So the first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and identify the statements. Okay, so I'm going to say P is um, I go to the party. Q would be I'm really tired. Tomorrow. R would be I saw my friends. Okay, so the second part would be now to write out the statements symbolically. Now remember, we want the conclusion to either be the, the implication or the contrapositive. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first statement would be, if I go to the party, then I'll be really tired tomorrow. So if P then Q. The next one is uh, if I'm really tired tomorrow, so that's Q, then I saw my friends, which is R. And um, the conclusion, so now I write a little bar and then I say the conclusion, therefore, if I did not see my friends, so not my friends, so not R, 
then I did not go to the party, which is not P. So here is the first implication in blue, if P then Q. The second um, implication the, of the premise would be if Q then R. And now the conclusion would be I did not see my friend, so not R, then not P. I did not go to the party. So in this case, um, I have some sort of not. And notice up here that I should have gotten if P, then R, or I should have gotten not R, if not R, then not P. And notice here I got if not R, then not P. So I didn't get the implication, but I did get the contrapositive. So remember that this is equivalent to if P then R. So this means that this is a valid argument. Okay, so with syllogism is used for, again, three implications. If you see premises and conclusion to be if then, if then, if then, go directly to this area um, subsection and do and apply a syllogism and identify the statements and rewrite this area as symbolically. And then if you get the implication or the contrapositive, like in this case we got the contrapositive, then it will be a valid argument.